Trump went all in on conspiracy theorist Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who just shut down his ill-fated presidential campaign, and one-time Democratic presidential candidate turned Russian propagandist Tulsi Gabbard. If you don't believe me, check out this ridiculous meme Trump shared on his failed social media platform. It features RFK Jr. and Gabbard, as well as uh, familiar faces and friends like J.D. Vance, Vivek Ramaswamy, and Elon Musk, and Trump himself, of course, as none other than members of the Justice League. The only thing more unhinged than a former president posting that meme, Kennedy announcing Monday that he will serve on Trump's transition team to, quote, pick the people who will be running the government. Both Kennedy and Gabbard have been tasked as honorary co-chairs of Trump's transition team, but a campaign senior advisor confirmed to The New York Times that members of that team will help Trump select personnel and policies. God help us all if they win. Brian and Stewart uh, are back with us. Um, Brian, I'll start with you here. The, the idea that uh, Trump and J.D. Vance, Superman and Batman and members of the Justice League, um, I don't even know where to begin with that one. Any thoughts? <laughs> Look, if you're trying to escape the weird allegations, then perhaps the first decision you make isn't to tap the guy who is best known at the current moment for loading up a bear carcass into his car uh, in, in New York City and then staging it in a bicycle accident. I mean, all this does is really cement what we already know, which is Donald Trump's second term would be staffed by people who are not only not only insane, which is what, you know, the, the RFK Jr. thing does, but also aggressively inept and also dangerous. I mean, we, we know from Project 2025, for example, I think the scariest part of Project 2025 is this, this element where all federal employees would be reclassified as political appointees, meaning Donald Trump would not only be able to appoint uh, for his inner circle, the dangerous people who surround him, the, the crazy people who surround him, the people like RFK and Tulsi Gabbard and on and on, but also the entirety of the federal government. Think about how that would manifest itself in the DOJ, in the FBI, the FCC, the IRS. So all this is is a blinking red light to the rest of us. Stuart, I mean, what's the, what's the political calculation that Trump is making here with Gabbard and RFK Jr.? Because quite honestly, like, I mean, unless he's about to create the Department of Conspiracy Theories and, and that's what RFK Jr. is going to be in charge of, um, th there really is no political gain by giving them such prominent roles. I understand you want to make a gesture to try to bring in whatever percentage of voters they may have that are loyal to them, but that's an insignificant amount. So uh, what is Trump thinking by prominently featuring uh, both the Russian conspiracist and the tinfoil hat guy? You know, I think we always have this sort of need to say there must be some strategy to this. Otherwise, it just seems like madness, and he looks like a blittering idiot. There's no strategy to this. It is madness. It is a blittering idiot. You know, Trump is, is you know, if you pet him, he will follow you home. And that's <laughs> what these two people have done. They flattered him. And so this is sort of like cool people that Donald Trump would like to hang out with. And I would just like to say to all of my Republican friends, all those people I helped elect, all those people, we said the government was serious. Remember, the Republicans are going to be the party of adults. This is what you've turned the party over to, okay? Yeah. Look at that. A bunch of nuts and kooks and weirdos who have no interest in governing. You have made one of the most serious endeavors in our world, governing the United States, into a non-serious uh, absurdity. And it, it is completely on you. Yeah. And to that point, Brian, actually, uh, uh, to Stewart's point, Mark Short, a Republican strategist and former chief of staff to Mike Pence, slammed Trump for recruiting RFK Jr. and Gabbard, saying uh, doubling down on big government populists will not energize turnout among traditional conservatives. Um, what do you think is behind this decision, Brian? RFK and Tulsi have become MAGA celebrities in their own right. But has Trump dug a hole with them that he can get out? Of? Look, I think I, I think Stewart's point is actually the exact right one, which is Donald Trump will will move over and embrace anybody who pets him, basically. And and it's indicative of a larger problem because you see how 
the world's autocrats and dictators want a useful idiot in the White House. And so that's why he has the support of the Vladimir Putins out there, the President Xi's out there, the Erdogan's out there, because they know they can all they have to do is is flatter him, is say something nice to him, and they will wholly own him because that's all he's looking for in 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 some colleague, in some other world leader. And then once they have him under their thumb, they can use him in any way they want to. Like, for example, undermining NATO, which has been the goal of Russia for the entirety of, of Putin's uh, presidency there. So th this just is is. Uh, indicative, again, of a broader problem with Donald Trump, which is he will embrace anybody who is nice to him. And it's very easy to, to get him to do that, to manipulate him, to bend him to your will. Yeah, sad state of affairs um, to see someone like that now uh, vying for the highest office in the country. Brian Tyler Cohen, Stuart Stevens. Gentlemen, thank you both. Greatly appreciate your insights this thank evening. You.